Welcome into another episode of They've Got Now. I'm really excited to be joined by someone who I've been meaning to get on all year. Uh, my time has just been all kinds of messed up, but I'm excited to have on my, my friend uh, Thomas Costello from over at Land Grant Holy Land, also known as the best place to get to read up on your Ohio State Buckeyes. Thomas, first and foremost, I appreciate you taking the time. Second of all, how are you doing, man? I'm I'm doing fantastic, Mark. I'm I'm glad we were able to meet this year. What get, I was trying to think of the game. I couldn't remember. Oh, it was question. it Belmont? Were you there for Belmont? I think no, it wasn't Belmont. It was uh, it was Boston College. I was there for BC. Boston Boston College. It started with the B. I yeah. was in I was in the ballpark. Yeah, yeah. No, that game was a God. That feels like both last week and also <laughs> forever ago, which is kind of hilarious because that was a uh, about as one sided of a game as the Buckeyes played the entire year. I think that was what they yeah. went up like. 30 to eight in the first four or five minutes of the game. And then that was pretty much it. So that was it like was, the, that's was the was, deepest yeah. that uh, Kevin went with the bench the entire season was that game. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm, I'm excited for the tournament. I thought I was going to have a much busier big 10 tournament, but that kind of ended pretty quickly for my responsibilities uh it was an interesting weekend so now there's just uh for really the first time this season uh well first time i'd say this calendar year there are questions surrounding the team and uh, sitting on it i can't imagine how it is being a a player or a coach having to then wait almost two weeks it's probably yeah just about maybe even longer than two weeks to get back out to the court so it's it, it's good i mean i not as busy as you but i'm excited for the busier season to kick within uh with the ncaa tournament yeah it's so interesting because exactly like you said i mean this team had uh they they, they won the big 10 outright in in conference play and obviously the expectation was like they wanted to they wanted to go beat Iowa again after they did mm -hmm. earlier in the year and lost later on. Like they wanted to go do that, wanted to win the Big Ten title and then ride that wave into the NCAA tournament. Because, I mean, I think part of what's been so interesting about this year, like South Carolina is dominant. And, and I think that's the storyline that should start every conversation with the national title. But I think when you're talking about who's going to meet them there and most importantly, just who's going to make the final four, like, this is a team that is – the expectation is to meet the Final Four this year. That's what they want to do. They want to get to the Final Four and put themselves in play to do even more. So how do you put that into perspective with what just happened last week? I guess it depends on what you think is the better route to go. You talk about momentum. And, uh, yeah, they lost in Iowa in Caitlin Clark's uh, – coronation day kind of event where it was her final regular season game in Iowa city. And it was huge and um, lost by 10 points with watching the game, looking at the final score, you're like 10 is not too bad considering how, how the rough, game looks, especially yeah. the, yeah, the end of the first half. Somebody put it best. Uh, one of the other OSC writers, Braden, uh, he put the first 59 minutes of that or the first uh, gosh, uh, 19 minutes of that quarter were great or for that first half were great. And then the final minute, it all just kind of, went downhill and then the next uh the second half it was trying to to play catch up after those issues came up at the end of the first half um so if you think momentum yeah they lost to iowa going to maryland they lost pretty pretty handily i think what Kev, kevin said after the game which kevin is known to be just even if he's upset you watch him on the court and he's he's lobbying with the refs he's talking to the refs he's yelling he's so much emotion by the time he gets to the press conference he's He's pretty just everything rolls off his shoulder. He's fine. Nothing really bothers him. After that game, you could tell just in the tone of his voice, like he was he was bothered, frustrated with that performance. Even one point saying Maryland looked like a team they needed to make the tournament to win this. They had to win the game to make it. And it looked like Ohio State was going to be the number one seed and everyone was just going to lay down for him. And his voice that like sounded the most agitated I've heard in three seasons asking him questions. Um so is it is it the other way, not just the motivation of, okay, winning in Iowa, you didn't do that. Winning in Maryland, having a deep Big Ten tournament run and carrying that to the tournament, or is it now the bounce back factor? Is it, you know, they were really up and then they're now really down. Are they going to come back up? Is this going to motivate them to play better? So it's looking back to December when they lost to Michigan, when they were in Ann Arbor, there was another game where they walked in and they felt like, 
we can beat them. And they should. Ohio State should beat Michigan this year with the teams they have. Their response to that loss, which is only a nine-point loss. I mean, Cody McMahon came out, and she wasn't a first-team All-Big Ten before that game. And then in 2024, that 15-game winning streak, I mean, she scored, what, 33 points and 12 rebounds against Iowa in Columbus. And she just starts uh, kind of turning it on whenever Ohio State needs it. And J.C. Sheldon's there. Celeste Taylor's offense is improving while she's also playing Defender of the Year basketball. I think it looks more like the response to Michigan next week, just because they're going to be playing in Columbus. I know it's not official yet, but your – your they're, market. They're gonna play. Yeah, we can say they're gonna play Columbus. They're gonna play in Columbus. I just don't 99.9 with the line over it. That's what they're gonna yeah. play at home. Um, they're gonna be able to come up against likely what a 15 seed, uh, if they hold on to a number two seed. It seems like the it's stacked in their favor to look a lot like last season, where they have a deeper tournament run in the Big Ten get demolished by Iowa. It was an embarrassing game last year in the Big Ten tournament, and then come out and a little slow against JMU, which, you know, happens when you don't play for a couple weeks, but then they beat North Carolina. They, they play UConn pretty much from jump ball to final buzzer and they, they beat them for 40 minutes. I I think you could see a same kind of run this year, but once you get to the elite eight, like you said, that's, that's not easy to then have to go through South Carolina if they make it that far. Yeah, no, exactly. I think that's what I'm so fascinated to see with this group because, um, I think what you said was was really apt for me. Like that Michigan game, obviously, like it slept rut walk is like maybe too far and, and not fair. But like that yeah. was just like not a good performance for them. And to be fair too, like part of what's difficult in this conference, like every single team can beat you if you do not show up. Um, mm-hmm. particularly a Michigan team, because they are like very consistent in, in some ways. Yeah. Um, but I think, like you said, especially with – I was worried about them after the Big Ten tournament last year. And, Grant, that was my first, like, full year in college basketball. So, I don't know. But then, like you like you said, they come out uh, – The I'll just – I'll never forget watching the score on uh, on uh, um, on my phone for the JMU game. And I checked it the first one, like, oh, oh, no. Like, this is uh, – Kiki Jefferson <laughs> is adding to her lore at, at JMU. This is bad. 2C going down. And then they, what, like, just absolutely blitzed them in the second half and, and took that away. And then, I mean, you take what JC did in the, the UNC game and then the totality of, of UConn. Um, I think what's so interesting is, like, this group, as somebody who is, like – I mean, it's my job to, like, gauge the entire field – I think that if I had to count it down, I think there are like probably six teams that really legitimately have a shot to win a national title this year. And Ohio State's one of them. But like you said, I think the issue is just going to be matchups. Like who do they play? Um, because I think one of the biggest problems for them is like when things are saying easy is the wrong way to put it. But like I feel like Iowa's defense is almost problematic for them at times because they're one of the teams that can run with Ohio State. And mm-hmm. when – you take away that, I just think it becomes really hard because when this team, like, honestly, defense has not been the problem for me this year, ever, really. I think the half-court defense, like, there have always been, like, it could be better at times, but I think it's been so much improved this year from last year. But the issue just tends to be if they take early shots without swinging the ball and they miss, they put themselves in such a massive hole, and it's really hard to come back from. Because I think that was the biggest problem in the game against Iowa. Like, you get a couple of runouts for Iowa. They thrive off those. And then it's like, bam, they score nine points in like 45 seconds. And this is not the same game it looked like going into halftime. Um, and I think, like you said, too, like part of the difficulty is I think Cody is the most important bellwether for this team in yes. regards to being national title contenders. Because you take that entire stretch all the way through that first Michigan game. And I thought Cody was still good. But like compared to what she's she showed at the end of last year and just in general, like that was not her level of play. And I think once you go after that game, like you're mentioning, she saw the floor so much better because it felt like there were a lot of times there was a lot of pull up twos. Um, granted, like every single opponent had the scout out on her. It was like, OK, we're just going to make her go left. And mm-hmm. then that, you know, it took some time for her to get accustomed to that what was your impression of like kind of i don't want to say like reverted back but i felt like the last couple weeks there were like especially like you took it take that iowa game and you take 
that game against Maryland. It felt like we saw that again. And so I'm just curious how you feel like that's going to maybe bounce back moving forward. Uh, the Maryland game, she started off, uh, She, I think she missed her first eight or nine shots. I think it was her first eight shots she missed them. Um, like you said, there were one or two mid-range pull-ups that she did, but that was after she was doing her patented go to the basket, take contact, try to get the layup, try to get the foul, which this year hasn't really gone her way consistently. Last season, she got those fouls, and I, I tell people all the time, I think that's her superpower. When she hears the whistle after she goes in for a layup and there's a foul called for in her favor, it just, I think she hits another level and she's yeah. like, okay, I'm ready to do it again. And she just keeps going against Maryland credit to, I mean, Brenda free. She's, she's a legendary coach. Her, her team was ready for Ohio state after losing to him twice. She went to the basket and she went in for those layups and she took contact. It wasn't like she was missing layup drills. Like she was going up against Maryland's best in the, in the paint and they weren't falling. I think one of those early shots was a layup where even she yelled after it because she's like, oh, how did I miss that one? Everything else, um, you could see the team, the game plan against Maryland was give it to Cody. Because like you said, she is kind of the center of it. If she starts making layups, that means players on the outside can get the ball more or they're going to start closing in more. When Cody wasn't making shots, Maryland didn't have to close in. You might have two players you know, on the right side uh, of the paint closing in on Cody, but then everybody else is watching to make sure that she's not passing out. And then their three point shooting was just not great. So if those layups fall against Maryland, you might have a completely different game. Um, so if she turns it on now, uh, that's like you said, I, I think that's the main way that they're going to get even to a potential game against South Carolina. And then a lot has to happen, I think for them to, to then beat South Carolina. But like you said, she's, She's so important for the team, but the team also has to have something else planned. If that's not working, um, somebody else has to be able to to step up. And usually it's been a tandem between her and her and JC. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's interesting. Um, because like and I, I didn't mean to make that sound harsh. I think it's more just like in general, no. like she's that level of player. Like I think she is the kind yeah. of player who can legitimately carry the team at times. And they do need that. But I think exactly like you're saying, part of what's difficult is when they aren't moving the ball it just looks so different and it's yeah. it's those moments where you go like okay well this is a this is a good team to like this is a great team is when they're able to get the ball moving and really swinging and i think um especially when you talk about what this could look like in a tournament run obviously i think so you know cody's the most important player but i think to me like when you talk about matchups and just different stuff like i i mean rebecca's growth this year I feel like has not been mentioned enough just at large, mm -hmm. um, like just has become that much more consistent with her shot. And I feel like it, part of it's a team thing too. I just feel like they've been more consistent in getting her involved offensively. Um, that's something I would have mm -hmm. liked to see more against Maryland. Um, but like in general, like how are you feeling like just with what her growth was like overall this year and also what she could do in the tournament? Uh, real quick too for for Cody's piece. I think if more players are moving around the paint with her, I think if other people are crashing in with her, it's a different story because Maryland out rebounded them by, I think it was fifty five to thirty one yeah. <laughs> in rebounds. Um, nobody was there. It's kind of like okay, watch Cody a couple times. He had Taylor th theory run in, but um, Cody was playing her best this year when she's running into the to the paint, but then she's finding an outlet. She's finding somebody else. Whenever the defense crashes, she's getting it out to somebody. I mean, she had. Um, what four double doubles in a row and last season I think she had three total and they were all in the in the postseason outside of that I don't know like you said with Celeste Taylor her defense I, and this is no slight to Taylor Mikesell her and Taylor Mikesell are very different players when Mikesell was on the court you had to have at least one defender on her the whole time she drew attention away from people Celeste is the I'm everywhere on the court I'm gonna get a block I'm gonna get a steal I'm gonna stop you uh, defensively and then as the season's gone on her offense just creeps up kind of more and more between her and Rebecca I I think they're I think they're huge for the team especially offensively Rebecca you mentioned how this year's been the biggest growth for her I mean two two seasons ago she starts because uh Dorka uh Juhas and Aaliyah Patty they both transfer out and she goes from kind of sitting on the bench to having to start and so this is now the the product of what 
two and a half years or so getting to this point. And it's not just that she's shooting the three slightly better, which she is, but she's passing so well. Mm -hmm. There are some games throughout that 15 game winning streak where she was leading the team in assists where she'll do this. Okay. Get it at the, the, the top of the, get at the top of the arc, fake a three, going for a layup. And for years, she would just go in for the layup, sometimes get a travel call, hopefully sometimes make the layup. But this year she was then doing like no look passes or passing it off to JC on the wing. And I, that kind of play is going to be needed. And not just um, in later rounds, but I mean, last year against UNC, UNC in the second round. And if bracketology you know holds, there's also potentially games against those middle seed teams like a Duke who is not going to is not going to lay down like again no offense to like a northwestern or somebody in big 10 play uh, they have to get that started they have to get that movement around Cody and they have to get that passing to where like you said when they're not making the passes you think oh this there's no way this team can win but whenever they're passing you think that they could be one of the best teams in the country like you said one of those six teams who has a realistic shot at at winning the title yeah, no, definitely. Um, and you mentioned with Celeste, too. Uh, what have you felt in terms of like her finding that footing has been biggest to you? Because I agree. I, you and I, have, I think I've, we've been on the same train because like I thought she was my favorite transfer uh, fit out of anybody that went in the portal. I thought her to Ohio State just made so much sense. Um, and I feel like it's just been apparent off rip with the defense, but it's really hit with the offense, especially in Big Ten play. Um, you know, and what has it been like getting to see that kind of growth from her this year? I think it's fantastic. Uh, Coach McGuff said this, um, I want to say late January. It was a month and a half or so ago. He said when Celeste came in, he took he took the blame and saying when he when she came in, I thought, okay, yeah, she's she's a leader. She's going to adjust to the system. But he didn't see her as somebody who needed a lot of coaching. But when he realized that she loves being coached and she loves getting that additional input from her coach to, to put it into the game. And she's just kind of flourished from it. She's gone from, okay, she's a great defender. She joins the team and, you know, they have a rough start of the year against Juju Watkins, you know, uh, a phenom in the first game. And then they have to go up against UCLA. And uh, those are both, you know, tough losses for him, but you can see game by game. Celeste is, she's getting more minutes because, it is kind of tough to get into McGuff's rotation like her Mike Stell and her both they're starting every game when they come into Ohio State but it's kind of like okay if there's things going a little bit wrong he was probably faster to take Celeste out than he is JC out just because he knows JC and he's been coaching her for what at this point five seasons now she's getting more of that trust before that Iowa game in January when they were in Maryland she picked up two fouls in the first quarter and McGuff kept her in. And he said after the game, it's because offensively we couldn't do anything. And defensively we weren't doing well. So I had to keep our best defensive player in the game. And since then, I I noticed too what during the, the holiday break in December, just on social media, like following her dad, like we're friends. And then seeing her post up, she seemed like she was at the gym every day practicing or shooting, practicing her mid-range, practicing her her threes. And it kind of came into fruition when they needed it the most. I don't think that game against Maryland, if you weren't watching Ohio State, uh, she had a more rough game offensively against Maryland in the tournament. But that's more of kind of the exception and the rule of what we've seen her just growing more comfortable with the offense. Um, that she I means she had the game potentially well it turned into the game winning shot against Iowa on January 21st she she charges to the basket when you have JC on the court you have Cody on the court and she makes the basket that eventually gets them into overtime she's coming up in big moments and not just defensively like she leads the big 10 in steals defensive rating all the same stuff she was doing with duke on the defensive side of the ball but when she fits in to ohio state and when she's gelling with the rest of the team it just takes their offense to the level they honestly need to be at if they're going to compete over the next few weeks. Yeah, no, exactly. Because I think I was I was so interested early on in the year because Kevin started, like especially with Madison having to come back from injury still. Um, they really worked in with like, okay, well, let's have Celeste run backup point. And she's done that a lot of the year. And it's looked really good. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's been really fun. Cause, like, not that she didn't do that at Duke, but I felt like she was much more of like, okay, we're just going to play you as more of a straight-up two-guard, but she's played a lot of the one this year. 
Um, mm -hmm. And getting to see her grow into that too, because like you mentioned, I think um, her finishing numbers even inside the arc weren't great to, to for the start of the year. And it feels like in Big Ten play, especially, she's gotten a lot more like comfortable of just playing with with within herself in, in pace. Like I think she kind of smothered herself at the rim a lot early on in the year with straight line drives and stuff. Um, and now it's like, okay, well, I have my pull up going. I, I'm able to get to the rim and, and use my athleticism there. But if I'm a little bit slowed down, it's, it looks better. Um, and exactly like you're saying, I think she's just kind of hit the point of like being really comfortable in the system. And long story short, this is my way of saying, like, I think that they're going to come out very ready for the tournament, um, just based on every, any time I've ever been around them for practice or um, just in general. Like, this is a group, like you said, I think they are very uh, not it, like kind of uh, not not to make like a direct comparison because, you know, but like. So much of Don Staley talking about last year's South Carolina group was that was a group that was like not that that didn't need to be coached hard because they'd been there in the program for such a long time and they were laser focused on on accounting on accountability on top of each other. Um, and again, not comparing Ohio State and South Carolina because it's two different kind of runs, but like that's very much this group. Like that is a lot of extremely competitive uh, people who all want to win and are all bought into doing that. And it's not a group that, that necessarily has to get coached a lot. So I think mm -hmm. I'm just I would be so it would be so so fun to be like a fly on the wall in that film session after that Maryland game to see like who is directing most of that stuff because I feel like a lot of it would be from the players. Um, but yeah, I I am fascinated to see how they come out with this. I mean, it, it, her offensive too. It, she her stat line for the season looks so different than most players. Mm -hmm. Her out of conference games for I think she averaged seven points, and now she's up to I think like thirteen or so. So yeah. she completely flipped the script. When they hit conference, like you said, she was finally hitting her stride. And the leadership of the team between her, JC, Ricky Harris, and Madison Green, they have a lot of leaders. They have a lot of folks who can kind of you know run the game on the court jc sheldon at this point she kind of sounds like mcguff anytime she speaks to the media she's kind of falling in the same you know uh, she sounds like another coach on the court and uh between her and celeste who are going to be you know getting most of the minutes with harrison green coming off the bench it's gonna be hard for two graduate seniors with the leadership levels they have to like you said kind of not not lay down on the tournament, but they're not going to go into the first game feeling upset about Maryland. I feel like of, of anybody, those two especially are, have been focusing on the next game already, but they're not going to go into it. I don't think they're going to go into it thinking that, okay, I can just, we can just take this easy. We'll get through the first couple rounds and then we'll, we'll turn it on because they, they're finding out like you saw against Maryland, they can't just flip a light switch and do it their comebacks this year though last season they made their whole life off of these huge comebacks and they had a it couple was, this dude, season like that was <laughs> last season was that was tough sometimes man because like it was awesome to watch but also like the stress it puts on you even from like a non-fan perspective and like you're just like all right well you guys are getting down a little bit here you know you might yeah. need to might need to start buckling in and hitting some shots and then it's like all right well <laughs> the press gets set and it's like we're fine but yeah I, I I don't – they had the one big comeback this year against Iowa, the 12-point comeback at home. Um, I, I don't think they're a team that wants to – you know, they don't want to have to come back. And seeing how they play against likely, what, a 15, maybe like 14 seed at the worst, uh, it'll be interesting to see how they – how they respond and what they come out with in terms of energy, intensity, whatever you want to call it. Definitely. A um, couple more things to hit on too. Uh yeah. Obviously, like I think Taylor, uh, Taylor theory has continued to just be a bright spot this year. And I think, again, like every player is so important to what this group does. But I think her being aggressive continues to be like one of the most important points for this group. Um, you know, what have you seen from her this year? What have you felt of her, especially over like the back end of, of, of Big Ten play? I think she made such a big jump last season because she came in as a freshman mm -hmm. I think it was uh she played d3 in high school and um she didn't really get a lot of minutes and you and you said like with mcguff against boston college that was the most he used his bench he kind of has eight players that at this point he's rotating them out 
Taylor Theory was a rare freshman um, because Cody came in with all the expectations. She came in with that, you know, top hundred recruit. She was playing with Team USA. So she started right away and she hasn't, you know, stopped starting since. Taylor came in and I think wowed McGuff to the point where second half of her first you know, freshman season, she's starting to get more minutes earlier in the first quarter. She's coming off the bench like first or second. And eventually as they get closer to the tournament, she's getting she's getting better against LSU, especially in that um, in the second round down in Baton Rouge a couple of years ago. They come out with this huge win because she's down there rebounding. Last year, she made such a big jump. And I thought, OK, her trajectory is just like, it's hard to imagine her ceiling because <laughs> uh, every year it seemed like she was improving at the beginning of this year. I thought she was playing, you know, fantastic. It feels like she's been kind of been quieter though, over the last couple of months, I feel like she hasn't been highlighted as much as she should. She she's often the best rebounder for Ohio state on the court between her and Cody. Um, the one thing that still kind of, I think holds her back a little bit is just her, her confidence you see this earlier in the season where she's trying to hit threes because she learned from Taylor Mike Sell, you know, getting into the gym early, coming in later after practice and and shooting more. She wants to develop her outside game because McGuff, you know, he he loves a, a forward who can who can shoot and also play inside the paint. That's why he, you know, recruits a player like Rebecca who can uh, kind of do both of those things. I think if her confidence was at a higher level and coach says this too this is not me saying it uh, or like a criticism of her she gets these open three attempts and she's not taking them anymore like she she kind of she waits a second you think she's going to do it and then she passes it off because i think that she doesn't want to take it you can kind of feel the frustration from the bench that she's not going for those opportunities because she can play the inside game. I, I, I think whenever they're playing well and you saw it against Maryland, the only times that they looked good was when theory got the ball in the paint, whenever somebody was finding her, when she was making a run under the basket and they were, they were getting the ball to her. Uh, I, I think that, and I joke around with other folks who cover Ohio state. And I said, if she had like the same confidence as Cody, I think her and Cody would be, you know, the next kind of, generation of the big 10 once you have folks like Holmes leaving and Clark leaving I think she has a, such a high ceiling and it would be it would be great for Ohio State to see her kind of turn that back on and and getting when she gets the ball going after it because defensively she's huge in the press she can she's fast she's quick for her size she can go up against guards and slow them down if someone tries to do the the quarterback pass McGuff's been saying it since she's a freshman. She's the most athletic person on the court. Any team they play, she's usually the most athletic. She can, I've seen her leap, catch the ball midair, and then find an outlet. <laughs> it's like still in the air whenever she's making these catches. It's like she's in slow motion whenever she does some of this stuff. So I think if, if she goes at the basket like a Cody, or if she takes the shots, even if she misses it, I think that's the problem is when she misses it, she's like, oh, I don't want to do that again. If you have a good shot, I think if she takes it, she's going to start to see that they go in more, and I think that confidence is going to just grow offensively. Defensively, though, she's – her and Celeste Taylor and, and JC, especially on the on the press side of things, the three of them, when they're on the court and they're playing at their defensive level, it's hard for anybody to 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 get around them and, and score consistently against them. Yeah, it's so interesting, like you bring up. Like, I think part of what's difficult is – um and I get definitely, you know, I, I feel the same way, but like, I feel like, you know, so often you, you think of um, growth on like, not, not linear, but like one of those like charts that like curves up and just keeps yeah, getting better right. and better. And I feel like so often it's like just not the case. And I think, especially with Taylor, like it's hard to take that kind of leap from freshman to sophomore and then figure out the next one too. Cause like, I think um, like you're saying as much as uh as much as it was awesome for her to, I mean, for the team to have Celeste come in, not that it like was obviously not saying that it like is a detriment to Taylor, but I think it was more like, okay, it definitely changed up. Not, not Taylor's role, but more like you're saying like, it's okay. Where am I? Like, do I need to move the ball? Do I need to do this? Like, I think like you're saying, you just see the thought with her a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, not even, I think like, I know this team is at its best when Taylor is not thinking. And when she just attacks, like you're saying, cause mm -hmm. she's so efficient off the bounce she's 
really she, bigs can't guard her because she's too fast and too fluid with the ball guards can't guard her because she's too strong and too big for them um a lot of it's just not the not thinking part and uh like you're mentioning i think the defense is so crucial and massive to everything she do she's a good passer um i just want to like like you're saying i think if they're going to have a big run, I think they kind of need everybody to be at their top level because this is very much a team like obviously they have really good top end talent, but it's not to the same as like some other teams. And I think having the collective with this group is so crucial to them being at their best this year. Um, and selfishly, too, I just like because I'm right there with you. I think Taylor's um, I was talking about this with somebody in a front office the other day, like um, her, like like you're saying, her 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 ceiling is immense. You know, it's just a mm-hmm. lot of the because I talked about it with Kevin too early on in the year. He's like, yeah, dude, it's like I I want her to take those threes. I'm telling her to take <laughs> those threes. She just got to do it. And so, um, you know, I'm hopeful that she gets to that point sometime soon. But regardless, she's a hell of a player and I love watching her. But uh, yeah, just have to go along on her for a second because I feel like she just like does not get talked about enough whenever there's actually no, a game she on. Doesn't. And she does so many little subtle things that are just um, impactful and meaningful on the court. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, like Br- Bria McKay, she's the Columbus Dispatches writer. She just joined covering the team this season. Mm-hmm. And she said the same thing. She's like, oh, I just feel like she's so underrated and she's not talked about enough. And I went back and looked at articles from the last two seasons. And at least once a season, I've written some article where it's like, why are we not paying more attention to Taylor Theory? Because of just how fantastic she plays. But also seeing her as a freshman and, and a sophomore and now as a junior going into her senior season next year, I don't... I think she's fine not getting any of the attention. I, she is I don't very think she's much somebody who's attention. she's very like quiet, reserved. I remember her first press conference. It was it was the sweetest thing in the world because she I got asked one question and then she tried to leave. Like she she tried to be done. And Maria, the <laughs> SID, was like, yeah. no, no, they have more questions and stuff. Like, and that's just that's also t- tough being like going into college and not everybody is you know media trained or anything like that. And they're and they're their kid like they're still kids they just finished high school um and just seeing her grow on the court along with the stuff off the court and you couldn't even tell the difference like on and off the court from taylor but still she would rather not get not get any of the attention yeah um well i think last thing i want to close up on too because obviously like her career is not done yet but Mm -hmm. this is going to be the last last NCAA tournament from JC Sheldon and uh, Mm. which is just kind of wild to think about. Um, Also, I I I forgot to tell you this. I did a, like a feature on JC earlier this year and I didn't realize it until I was going back through um, like going back through some B roll stuff from, from other interviewers, uh, you know, earlier on in her career. And um, like, I'd known that she was from North Northeast Ohio. Like I'm, I mean, same because like she she was from Northeast Ohio, but then they moved when her job, her dad changed jobs because he got out of coaching right when um, JC was getting into high school. And he went and he took the job at Dublin Kaufman as their AD. And uh, so it was funny because I'm going through all these videos and uh, I think it was a feature on on her and her sister. And I'm watching the interview, Jason, I'm like that. She taught me in high school in, in, in middle school. Like, and I was like, it it was like one of those things where it finally clicked me like that, that Mrs. Sheldon is JC Sheldon's mom. Okay, that makes sense <laughs> now. Um, so it's yeah, one of those this oh, is that's... like the first season that's really made me feel old in a lot of ways. I know I have a ways to go in that, but yes. Um, when you think about JC and what she's done with this for this team, and as like kind of just the embodiment of everything Coach McGuff wants out of this group. Yeah. I mean, like, how do you even kind of get started thinking about her impact here? Um, I'll preface by saying that I, I think it's great that players can transfer. I think the transfer portal is awesome. I think they're allowed to make these decisions and they're allowed to, you know, these are adult decisions they're making to change schools and everything for JC to, to stay at Ohio state this whole time when she came in, they were going through sanctions. They were going through issues. She wasn't able to play in the postseason because of those sort of things. How consistent she stayed for Ohio State since she came in as a freshman. Uh, she started, gosh, just about every game that she's made an appearance in since she came to Ohio State. I, I think she's going to be remembered as as one of those like top five. If you're going to do like an Ohio State kind of Mount Rushmore thing. And it's not because she was 
like a, a Kelsey Mitchell scoring a zillion points and and being dominant game. She's definitely dominant in games, but I think she's got to be remembered just for the consistency of how much she put into the games that she played in. Uh, McGuff kind of jokes that he can't take her off the court because if he takes her off the court, she's just bugging him to get back onto the court. Like for 40, you, you see her play for 40 minutes and then you interview her like 15 minutes later. Like she never sweats. She never seems tired. When she was injured last year, they tried to get her onto like the, uh, what is it, like the aquatic treadmill or something to get her heart rate up. And they could, they could never do it. Like they can, uh, that's what the SID would share with us kind of behind the scenes. It was so hard for her even to get to a target heart rate because she's just so used to putting everything into it and her conditioning is fantastic. I, you're not going to be able to replace her when she's gone. I, I, I think that she has left an indelible mark on the, on the program that it's going to be hard for, I think other, other guards to kind of fill right away. I know that I say that with, the number three player in the country <laughs> joining the team next year. But uh, she, she's been a fan favorite, uh, just showing how much, you know, like you talk about her mom and her family. And she said the reason that she stayed at Ohio state was because of her family. And you can see it on the court, the family she's built with Ohio state and her and Ricky Harris and Madison green, and Rebecca Mikolashikova, they're all, um, they've all been it together and they've been, the foundation of the team that now next year when three of those four are, are likely to leave because Ricky Harris did senior day, Madison didn't. So you can kind of read the writing on the wall. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take to be able to fill her, to fill her spot. Yeah. Um, no, that's a great point. Cause when I was out um, early on this year, I had like mentioned, cause Diana had played like a decent amount in that BC game. And um, I know, you know, the coaching staff really likes Diana. And um, so I asked JC about it. Like, you know, you were in her position. I was like, dude, that was like five years ago. When I was a freshman. So it's like, you know, it's like, to me, it's not that long ago, but it, it, that is pretty long ago. But um, yeah, I think exactly like you're talking about when you think about like, I know obviously this, this program over won a pretty big overhaul after dealing with some of those sanctions and um, kind of rebuilding with what was going to be next for them. And um, I think, next year i i mean obviously i don't want to undersell this year and how important it is for them um because i do think they have a legitimate chance to make something happen but um next year is just going to be so fascinating because like you said like i feel like jc has been like the constant of this program and mm -hmm. getting to know them over the last year and a half like i it is going to be pretty wild to think about her not being there um you said to i don't know if you've ever watched jelani cambridge play before oh my god she's going to be incredible um, oh, I mean, like she she's fantastic. The things that I've seen her like do, it, it's it's amazing. I, I think it's just that she's been the linchpin of this generation of, you know, Ohio State sure. players. Chase. Yeah. They, they think that's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. I just just saying like Jelani. Yeah. Like, and that's no <laughs> that's no slight to Jelani because she's going to be uh, people are asking like, oh, is she, is she going to start or something like I don't see a world where she's not starting day one for Ohio State. Like that doesn't doesn't seem possible. Even with like a Madison Green on the team, I think McGuff makes it work to get them both out. They're going to be both starting, I'm sure, for the team. And an another thing McGuff said it was just a passing comment where after the season's done, he kind of becomes GM because somebody was asking him about the transfer portal, how it changes it. He's a coach until the final game. Once the final game's over, he turns on to his he turns his GM hat. It's I don't think it's going to be tough to convince players to come play with Cody McMahon, Taylor Theory, and Jelani Cambridge. I, I don't think it's going to be tough. So it, w there's going to be a dip, obviously, with JC and Celeste leaving. But I, I still think Ohio State's not going to be – they're not going to have to rebuild. <laughs> Let's say they're not going to have to rebuild after the season. Yeah, no, most definitely. Well, Thomas, I appreciate your time. Uh, is there anything that you want to plug or anything that you know you, you want to direct people to? Obviously, I'll have links for all of your stuff down below, but yeah. Oh uh, no, for sure. Just uh, following Land Grant, I'm uh, be out at the tournament games. Uh, fingers crossed. I'll also be out at either Portland or Albany, whenever they, uh, wherever they might be landing. And then if they make it out to those games, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see uh, their growth and see how they respond to the game in Maryland. But nothing outside of the the work putting in to cover to cover Ohio State, and I. Mark, I appreciate with all the havoc of the tournament coming up, you spending a little time to 
to have me on and talk with me. I appreciate it. Well, we'll definitely have to do it again soon. I'm going to try and get out to Columbus if I can. Um, TBD. We'll see what happens. Where are you going? Like, where are you going to go for the tournament? Are you going to like stay as close to home as you can? Like, what's your honestly you have probably, a location you want um, to go to? I think I might just be stuck here. Stuck is the wrong way to put it because I'm lucky, oh. lucky to be here. But I think you I will cover probably, more than one team. I get it. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll probably have to be here glued to about six screens until um until we get to the final four. So that'll be. I mean, that it'll be sense. nice, but also yeah. So I'm hoping that they make it to the final four because I literally live in Cleveland, so that makes it easier um so we'll see but thomas i appreciate your time to everyone listening of course follow thomas everything he's doing uh support independent journalism it matters uh and most importantly have a great rest of your day and thank you for listening